guys, I hope you guys can see me. We're gonna be looking at the Hercules cluster because that's what we looked at it with the four inch, the six inch, and now with the 12 inch. So with a low power 32 millimeter, it is like blazing. The difference is now gonna be that the Hercules is actually much lower than I was here with uh, the six inch reflecting telescope or the heritage. So it's a little bit of a downfall because it's much lower in the sky, much lower. It's been at least a few weeks minimum. But okay, I'll put in a higher eyepiece. Uh, we're at 18 millimeter, which is not that super high. Okay, and you can see thousands of um, stars. So let me see how high I can go. Let's try to take it to uh, 6.7 ultra wide. Okay, there we go. With the 6.7 millimeter ultra wide and focused. I mean, this is not, when I used to bring the 12 inch uh, LX90, I'm pretty sure I saw it better than this, but it is pretty high power. I can figure it out after, but you can see thousands of dazzling little stars. So that's kind of neat considering how low it is. Um, I don't know, because it's almost winter, there's no way I can see M51, I doubt it. Okay guys, so with the 32 millimeter Super Palazzo, I just fit them in the same field of view and it's much, much brighter than the six inch. So, you know, putting a 12 inch in a zone two, wow, you can really see, I mean, it's not like the photographs, right? But definitely very nice, much brighter than the six, even considering now we're talking about almost a month later, of course, the item is much lower. The, the dipper is really as far down as it's going to go. Okay, why don't we try the double cluster? The double cluster is now, because it's getting winter time, it's up getting pretty high. I was even showing Angelus with our visually with our eye, if she could see it. She really couldn't. I could have glimpsed it, but she didn't. That's okay. Everybody's eyesight is different. Okay, I can see them. With the 32 millimeter, it is, I would say, a little too close with a 12 inch, with a, I believe it's a 1500 millimeter focal length. So with a 32 millimeter, it is too close. Now let me put an inch and a quarter, 38 millimeter. So that'll make it a bit smaller. Okay, that's better because I could fit them. I'm gonna show you what this guy's, this eyepiece is, just because if you guys have an inch and a quarter format eyepiece, and you only have an inch and a quarter, um, and you want low power, I'll show you this 38 millimeter. It's actually pretty good. It would be easily comparing to uh, the Super Palazzo 38. It's a 52 degree field of view, but I'll show you that later. Now, let's see what happens when we put a 31 millimeter, that huge eyepiece I have, that's an 82 degree field of view, but this eyepiece is very heavy. I have, I'm pretty sure I'm probably gonna, let's see if we unbalance the telescope now. Yeah, okay, it's starting to fall. The good thing is I can put more pressure with the handles. Holy cow. Okay, oh, this eyepiece is nice. Pinpoint stars right to the outside and it's a really wide field of view. For like a 30, when you compare this to a 32 millimeter Super Palazzo, the uh, 38 millimeter like Super Palazzo with a 52 degree and now when you go to 31, so it's one millimeter less, but 82 degree field of view, that it looks like you're spacewalking. Okay, let me put the two inch Mead 
56 millimeter eyepiece and see what do I like better. It's not as heavy, a 31 with an 82 field of view or a 56 with a 52 field of view. Okay, so one thing with the 56 millimeter, I think I just need like a millimeter more out focus, a couple millimeters. But I could see, hmm, it's not bad. You know, it's hard to say. Um, I could see still a wide field of view, but I think I like the 31 because it was closer power. And it, it showed, even though the image, I don't know, uh, it's hard to say. So this one is less power than the 31. So the 31 is a bit closer and gave what looks to be comparable field of view. But I think I like to view in the 31. So that's not bad at all. Okay, guys, let's go to the Andromeda Galaxy. Whoa, it's really high up in the sky. Let's star sense find it. I'm going to stay with the 56 millimeter eyepiece for now. Like, even though I have these red lights on and they're not super bright, it's helping me with my dark adaptive eyes, even though when I'm looking at this deep sky stuff. But can you guys see me good enough? Or do you prefer me using that flashlight and blinding me? But I can't look at the camera then. So Andromeda looks huge. It feels, it goes from the entire field of view and I actually have to pan to see the rest. I can see the companion down below easily and I see the other companion. This is one of the best. Uh, now when I used to have the SCT, not as good view and the reason is because the SCT was 3000 millimeter focal length where this one is half so it's giving me a wider field of view especially for the Andromeda. Now let me use the 31 and see which one do I like better. With averted vision I might be able to just glimpse like kind of like dust the dust lines. I do have a focal reduction. It's a half times or 0.5 or 0.50. Let's see how it works. But because still I got a pan with the Andromeda because it's so huge, I want to see the whole thing. The focal reducer helps. Okay, I can see more extension, but I really don't know if, if really this is a 0.5 reduction because it doesn't look like it's 50% more field of view. It's bright and clear. Andromeda goes huge. I still just barely fit it in the field of view. Very good view. What about the pinwheel? It's close by and I haven't showed you guys it before. Why don't we take a look? Because I haven't seen it in a little while too. Oh yeah, there it is. Right at the bottom. It's nowhere near as nice as Andromeda, but you definitely see a pretty big core. A pretty big fuzzball, but it's hard. I don't really see anything else besides like a fuzzy thing. It is fairly bright, but uh, okay. I mean, it's not bad. A lot of people might just say, eh, okay, it's a gray thing. Let's go to the Plady Star Cluster. It's really low. I got to put a lot of tension. Uh, it's a good thing that this telescope... It has the two handles where I can put more tension because with the, the weight of these eyepieces, focal reducer and how low I am, I think with another telescope, I, I wouldn't be able to balance properly. Okay, the field of view barely fits uh, the Plady Star Cluster in the field of view. To the Dumbbell Nebula, because that's what we tried last time. It's still kind of high in the sky, so I'm assuming it's going to be nice. Oh yeah, easy. In fact, I don't even need the focal reducer right now. It's actually making it too small. Usually the Dumbbell Nebula is big. And uh, right now, with the focal reducer, I think it's making it a little too small. It actually looks like very similar to the pictures. So let's try the 18 millimeter super because I want to get more power. Oh wow. Yeah, with an 18 millimeter, it's amazing. 
let me get a filter. Okay, I picked a broadband filter, which I would have preferred a narrow band filter, but since I just grabbed it already, let's just use it. Okay, let's see with the filter, if it's going to enhance. Not bad. Broadband filter is fine. It brings out a little bit of the nebula, a little bit more, but this is the Oxygen 3. It's not bad, guys, but even in a 12 inch, it kind of darkens it a lot. Well, it looks good in all three filters anyway. I kind of mixed up whichever ones it is because it's so dark, I can't even see. Let's go. Let's go to the Ring Nebula because that's what we checked out last time as well. I'm, I'm staying on the 18 millimeter, so it has some decent power because the uh, Ring Nebula is kind of small, but it is bright. Oh, there it is. We're in the field of view. Oh yeah, much brighter than uh, the six inch. Okay, I'm gonna put a 6.7 ultra wide because uh, this nebula is small, small but bright. Yep, looks like the photos. Okay guys, so here's the conclusion. We looked at everything that the uh, six inch and the four inch saw. Of course, this is much later. So a few of those things are really low in the sky now. So you're looking through some, a lot more atmosphere. And then uh, some of the stuff are up pretty high. Milky Way is still blazing, even though we're getting, you know, mid autumn at least. But the Milky Way is still very high. Oh, we didn't look at M11. Huge difference also from a 12 to a 6. The 6 is more portable. And this does take a lot more room in the car or van, right? But my personal preference is this size. Before it was a 12 inch LX90 GPS out here because it could find stuff. It has 3000 millimeter focal length, but it's just easier to set up a 12 inch Dobson. The only bad thing is it doesn't have the tracking as the uh, SCT does. But the deep sky objects, when you're low to medium power, medium high power, it's not flying by like the planets do. This is October 24, depending when this comes out. The comet was a, a fuzzball. Me and Angelus only glimpsed it with averted vision and we're at a zone two. The tail, I mean, when you're looking at it, uh, the tail was pretty big, like, um, I don't know, at least 15 to 20 degrees, which is big. But again, we couldn't really detect it like the pictures I, I will put up uh, visually. It was only in the camera and only with averted vision. We can kind of see the glow, but it was pretty big glow. I'm still, it's still disappointing to me comparing to the two amazing comets of uh, the century, which was in 1996, Comet Hakataki, and 97 was hale -Bopp. Those two are so bright, even from the largest cities, that it was just in, like an omen in the sky. Uh, you probably heard of stories, people back then, when they saw something like that, it was a, um, what did they think it was, like a, um, the creator was sending an omen to uh, Earth or whatever, uh, not knowing it's actually a beautiful thing. Well, as long as it didn't hit, doesn't hit us, right? But uh, yeah, those two comets were amazing. They were a hundred times brighter than what I would see even from here. And to see it for a, a Bordel 9 back then, what can I say? Anyway, guys, I guess that's it for this video. So if you guys can get at least, it depends really on your portability. If portability is number one on your list, something like a Heritage or 6-inch Dobson, 6-inch Mini Dobson, or a solid tube 6-inch can do you really well if you're at dark enough skies, like 4, 3, 2, and 1, if you could ever get to 1. If you have enough room and you can go a bit bigger, and you can go to the 8, the 10, or if you can get to a 12, do it. Because it, everything you see... It just it hits you in the eyeball a lot better. Uh, it you don't you're not gonna see the colors like you do in in the videos and and photographs, but at least you do see the brightness. 
anyway guys that's it uh joe jaguar like comment and subscribe if you know anybody that's getting in the hobby share my channel with them if you know anybody that's on the forums and they've asked what size would you get in a this zone or that zone why don't you say hey joe jaguar did that already anyway guys i also do have members uh, videos where once a month i put a, i put a video just for the members it does not go on the regular and it's only 99 cents a month to see that if you'd like to join and see videos uh that you won't see on the regular channel by all means uh why not you why not me